so uh, uh, my, my talk today is going to be about hybrid data simulation methods for uh, land surface models. Um, just to kind of preface this a bit, every, all the work we're doing here is, is in relation to parameter estimation, not state estimation. And that's because um, all the problems we've been working with, we've found the, the dominant source of uncertainty has been from the parameters rather than the state. And this is sort of like what was discussed yesterday. It's quite, quite different to numerical weather prediction where the physics are kind of fairly well set and it's all, all the focus is on getting the state better. Um, and so for parameter estimation, it kind of lends itself to more sort of variational data simulation methods or data simulation methods that can use a whole time series of observations because we don't want to retrieve um, time varying parameters. All, all the parameters that we're considering here are, are time invariant. So we, we want to be able to optimize over a long time series of data, usually a, about a year long window so that we can capture seasonal dynamics with any, any parameters that we might recover. So the model that we'll be using mostly within, within this work is, the Joint UK Land Environment Simulator or JAWS model. This is the, the model of the UK Met Office and it's also the land surface component in the UK Earth System model. So, um, oh, there we go. Uh, so, there we go. <laughs> so just a little bit about uh, variational data simulation. Um, I'm sure lots of people are, are, are very familiar with this anyway. We're, we're really just concerned with minimizing a cost function with two terms. One that's the prior term, trying to minimize the distance to some prior guess to the parameters or state variables, given a background error covariance matrix. Um, and one that's a term that's trying to minimize the distance to some observations, given an observation error covariance matrix. So all the uncertainties on our observations and all the uncertainties in our prior information. To minimize this cost function, uh, we need the, the derivative of the cost function because we tend to use a gradient based descent algorithm. Um, so the derivative of the cost function or the gradient of the cost function is given by this equation. And, and we have an issue here is, is, is this, this term here, this, this guy is, is a bit of a pain to compute. So this is the, the adjoint or the tangent linear model. And um, that is basically the derivative of the model code. So this is quite hard to, especially with these big land surface models, which are thousands of lines of code, lots of switches to turn on and off, which can be very different depending on how the models run. To compute this adjoint can be very difficult. And then to maintain it as we have sort of new model releases every six months, even more sometimes with Jules, uh, can be quite an expensive thing to do. So, so our, our technique is going to be trying to get rid of this, this adjoint because we don't have it for our version of Jules either. So it's kind of motivated by that as well. Um, so we're going to be doing that by trying to borrow some methods from the ensemble data simulation literature and kind of sort of smudge those into the uh, variational cost function. So we'll have now have an ensemble of uh, prior parameter vectors or state vectors, and these can be drawn from some distribution with a, with a mean and error covariance matrix. Uh, and, and then we can sort of substitute that in. I won't go through all these equations, obviously it's quite dense, right? But the, the main thing to say is, is that this term here can now be approximated by, um, by, by this, this big matrix here, which is basically just a lot of, um, a lot of runs of our um, Jules model or any, any other land surface model using different um, realizations of those parameter vectors. So just have a little bit more of a look of how that would look. We'll do that in the next slide. This is just to say, um, we've developed this and it's called, our, our technique's called Lavender. We had to give it a name, so we've called it, we've called it Lavender, why not? Um, we've published this in Geoscientific Model Development, uh, and we've also just had a paper come out in Hydrology and Earth System Sciences using this technique with, uh, with SMAP data and the Jules uh, land surface model. So just to have a little bit of a look at a, a schematic. Um, we're going to sample sort of n unique parameter sets. This can be any size, the ensemble, but uh, in our expense, it's going to be about size 50, uh, just to, with computational expense in mind of running all these Jules models. We then run the model forward for all those different realizations of the parameter sets. Uh, so we can see here, we've got different model trajectories depending on what the parameter values are. Here, we've only got five model trajectories, but you would have many more, obviously. Uh, we then identify the observations, which we want to combine with, the, with these model trajectories to improve the parameters that are going into the model. Um, and this is for the whole time window and spatial domain that this, this data simulation is, is, is done. So, so we're, we're, we're finding parameters that are common for the whole spatial area and the whole time window. So um, we get lots of constraint on them in many different directions. So then we crank the handle on lavender 
and it pops out some optimized um, parameters which we can run the model forward with and hopefully that helps us fit the observations uh, more accurately if we believe the observations if we don't believe the observations obviously we might not see as good a fit but the nice thing here is that once we've run this this initial model ensemble we can keep doing different data simulation experiments here without having to rerun that that model ensemble and you'll get new realizations to the to the uh, optimized parameters so we can then um, run the both both those into into the subsequent year and and sort of judge against independent observations in our hindcast. So the output of lavender is going to look something like this. You're going to have some prior um, prior parameter distributions which are the light gray, and then you have a posterior parameter distributions which are your 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 dark gray values, which will probably narrow as you get more confident in the parameter values and shift one way or another, depending on what the technique thinks needs to be done. So just a little quick look at the pros and cons. Obviously, we've motivated this by trying to avoid this model adjoint or the, the sort of derivative of the model code. We don't have to do that anymore. Um, it's very, very easily parallelizable. We can run each of these uh, model runs on a on a um, on a different core and group them all together at the end. Uh, we're using all these observations. We've still got this variational aspect, so we don't retrieve time varying parameters. We get a, a set of uh, time invariant parameters which help, help us uh, describe the dynamics of the problem. Uh, but obviously, we're importing all these associated cons uh, that we have from ensemble methods right so so we're, we're going to be subject to the sort of ensemble size being too small sometimes or it being poorly to condition then we might need techniques like localization and inflation um, we're also currently assuming gaussian statistics but that could be that could be updated too um, so just to look at some examples of this uh, initially we've done some work over the uk looking at soil moisture data simulation we're running jewels at a one kilometer resolution here um, over, over this grid box here, over this sort of spatial domain here. And we're assimilating uh, observations from the NASA SMAP uh, mission of, of soil moisture. So the nice thing that we have over, over the UK is, is obviously lots of in-situ validation. And in particular, we're using these sort of fairly new cosmic ray neutron probes. And the nice thing about these probes is they give us an estimate to field scale soil moisture, which is much more representative of our one kilometer model grid than your traditional sort of point soil moisture center, which is very localized measurement of soil moisture, whereas this is kind of representative of 500, 600 meters in, in, in diameter from the Cosmos probe. And we've got lots of these over the UK, as you can see, the red dots are the, the Cosmos probes here. So this is all in this uh, hydrology and earth system sciences paper, uh, like I say, but uh, just to show you for one grid cell, you've, you've got the prior um, prediction from Jules's blue line. The posterior is, is, is the orange and we're fitting those, those SMAP observations much more um, closely with our, with our optimized parameters here. And in this case, we're optimizing the, the soil parameters of the Joules model. And we're doing that through some pedo transfer functions and, and a, a soil data set. Um, I, can't, I won't go into that too much now, but all the um, details are in the, in the paper there. Obviously, we, we can't be sure if we're doing a very good job if we just look at look at this map. So uh, we've got all these these nice Cosmos probe observations. Here's me with one particular Cosmos Cosmos probe here. Um, and if we look at one particular location, this is this is Cardington, and we take the the closest one kilometer Joules grid cell. Um, we can see here the blue line again is our as our model prior estimate, and our, our orange line is the posterior after we've optimized. These parameters, the black plus lines are the observations from the Cosmos probe. And these are, these are completely independent, haven't been used in the DA, but we're fitting them much more closely than before. And that, that's the case over, over all of these Cosmos probes. We find a, a, an average 16% increase in correlation and a 22% reduction in our MSE after DA to these, these independent observations of soil moisture. So it's really nice that we, we kind of, just from assimilating the SMAP, we, we, we're getting these improvements uh, in the in situ uh, estimates. So we've kind of taken this now and we've upscaled it to the continent of Africa. And this is working with the TAMSAT group at the University of Reading. So they've been producing satellite rainfall estimates over uh, the African continent for sort of the past 40 years or so. The nice thing about TAMSAT is that they've got a really, uh, they've got access to a really dense network of rain gauges over Africa through lots of kind of um, outreach work and, and lots of sort of wrangling over the years, which is quite unique. Um, so, so they've got quite a nice skill from their, from their satellite rainfall estimates. And in this work, we're, we're doing a joint assimilation now with SMAP and also the Tropomi solar induced fluorescence observations from the ESA Sentinel-5P uh, mission. And this is all to produce a, uh, an operational soil moisture data set 
um, with the TAMSAT group that, that's sort of um, now available here. So obviously the problems are a lot bigger now. We've got many more observations, sort of 1.5 to 2 million observations now. Um, and that's that's come with sort of a bit of optimization of the code and, and, and computational uh, wrangling there. But it, it all seems to be working fairly well. So like I said, we're looking at these Tropomi um, SIF uh, observations now. I won't go into that too much now, just, just for time considerations. But just to look at some of the results. So this is the soil moisture results. Now, what we're showing here is, is unbiased root mean squared error um, of the skill of the model judged by unbiased root mean squared error, where blue is good and, and red is bad. So if, if it's blue, we've, we've improved the model skill in the posterior estimates once we've updated those parameters and done this assimilation over the whole African continent with that one year of, of data. So all those observations in one instantaneous uh, data simulation experiment. And you can see most places we're, we're getting blue colors, which is good. Obviously, we've got some reds up here in the Sahara, but uh, the hashing here corresponds to areas where the satellite observations aren't of, of sufficient quality to use within the, within the data simulation algorithm anyway. So we, we don't really trust in the observations here. So if we're not doing too well, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, so this is just showing you some points from time series plots. Again, the same color scales. Again, the, the posterior is orange, prior blue, um, and, and we're fitting those, those observations more closely there. If we look at the uh, solar induced fluorescence estimates we're getting or results we're getting now, um, it's a bit more of a mixed bag. Uh, now green is good, brown is bad. And um, we can see that although we've got lots of green, we've got de some definite areas of brown and these kind of mostly correspond to areas of um, dense vegetation rainforest. And, and this makes sense because the sort of SIF signal kind of saturates at very high levels of productivity. And also, I mean, uh, this is a unbiased root mean squared error. So it's, it's a as an estimate of the variability, if, if we're matching the variability well, and, and the variability in those areas is just kind of flat because they're productive all year round, more or less. Um, so we're getting lost in the noise in these areas. So it's not too, too concerning that we're, we're not doing well over these, these rainforests in some ways. Again, just some time series plots of those, those points here. The nice thing to see is, is that although we're obviously we're, we're, we're removing the bias, uh, it is, is arguable whether, whether we care too much about removing the bias or not, but we're also matching the, the correlation much much more closely, which is good to see. And we're, we're capturing these periods of low productivity uh, much more accurately than we were uh, before. And th this is coming a lot from the soil moisture as well. So yeah, just, just to say that again, I'm, I mean, the, the SMAP soil moisture is really helping us to capture those periods of low productivity due to um, water stress, which is nice that we've got these kind of um, complementary to, to data sets that are giving us something something uh, beneficial to the model estimates over this area. So just to summarize then, uh, we've introduced this, this, this lavender uh, technique and, uh, and a way to remove the, the computation of that adjoint in the minimization of, of the cost function to, to find some optimized parameters. We showed a couple of applications of this over the UK and Africa. We found improved soil parameters uh, and hydrological predictions validated by these in situ Cosmos probes over the UK, which I, I think these Cosmos probes are a really nice resource to have. Um, and we've improved water balance estimates and, and shown that that's, uh, that's improving model estimates of solar reduced fluorescence over Africa. So yeah, thanks a lot, cheers.